Seen one sugar, seen them all, right? Not quite. This is the story of sugar with a special zing. Organic, unrefined sugar from the mountains of Costa Rica. That's up next on Chefs Afield. This is New York's celebrated Kraft restaurant. The pastry chef is the young and acclaimed Karen Damasco. Pastry here is not what pastry is elsewhere. I feel like pastry is the ultimate because it's something that's completely unnecessary. You don't need it and it's just 100% enjoyment. Kraft in comfy old Gramercy Park where noted restaurant impresario Tom Calicchio and his team have won all the culinary prizes that there are. Here, Chef Damasco creates dishes that are as simple as the decor is plush, with its leather walls and hand-done metalwork. Well, the craft approach to cooking is to take the very best, very seasonal ingredients and do very little to them. We spend so much time thinking about these great ingredients we're getting, like the great produce and high-quality butter and eggs and, you know, sugar is something that I, I kind of always took for granted. Karen had been creating desserts the way your grandmother did looking for the best ingredients, taking advantage of seasonal flavors. Sugar was sugar, but taking sugar for granted was about to change. This, this sugar cane is about 14 months. Karen's love for quality ingredients has taken her to the sloping hills of Costa Rica, where the brothers Ortuño grow what may be the finest organic, unrefined sugar in the world. Wow, this is amazing, Felipe. Can you tell me a little about what's going on here? Yes, sure. We are in a field where we are begin planting of the sugar cane. Uh -huh. And uh, what we do uh, first is that we plow the soil and we begin to make the rows into the soil using the, the oxen, as you can see right here. How much sugar cane are you growing here? We have 500 acres of sugar cane, yeah. which we grow uh, the year round. That means that we uh, plant and we harvest uh, during, the, during the year, all these Through the entire year yes. you can be harvesting. That's and um, we have two volcanoes here, so the soil has, here has a, a good uh, fertility. And um, we have very good sun conditions here as mm -hmm. well, and a lot of rain. So those three uh, factors make uh, the, uh, the conditions very, very good for growing sugarcane. Why do you use oxen? The only way to do it is with, with oxen because uh, a tractor will get stuck here and it will be very difficult to get it out. These animals, are, they are raised here. Yeah. They're, like, they're good boys, uh, <laughs> very well trained because uh, they, ha they have a really, a really heavy work. Yeah. And very tame, as you can see. Yeah, they, uh, they're so friendly. Sturdy oxen have worked these fields for decades without the growl and pollution of fossil fuel machines. It might look easy, but cutting sugarcane by hand is among the hardest jobs humans do, as Chef Damasco is about to discover. All right, so now we have the trough that the oxen have plowed. This is where you do the planting? Yes. And you use actual sugarcane to grow more sugarcane? Yes, that is what we call the, the seed of the sugarcane. This is, but okay. is this the same thing that you squeeze the juice out of? Yes, the only difference is that this Sugarcane is about uh, only six to eight months of age. So it starts growing it start out of the... Right here, right at this point, you see this? Wow. Okay, so what we do, basically, is that we put these stems here, and we have to cut the seed just like this. Uh-huh. And why do you do that? To, uh, to make uh, the germination it will be faster. Do you want to try to do it? Yes. You have to do it hard. Okay. Just Try to cut it in, in two pieces. Okay. No, I almost it's got gotta it. be harder. There That's go. it. Very good. Do it again. This isn't as easy as it looks. Well, after three days, I will I will hire you here. <laughs> <laughs> you need three days of practice. There we go. I got a good one. All okay, right. So, at, what do you do next? We have to put uh, the organic fertilizer on top 
of the sugar cane. And what is this made out of? This, this organic fertilizer, we have uh, macadamia uh, shells. Oh, and we, you grow the macadamia nuts on, the, on right. your farm. We have ashes, you see how black it is? Yes. And we have muds coming from the uh, clarification, okay? So it's the byproduct of the sugar production? That's right. We, uh, we try to use all the byproducts that we have from the uh, industrial processing mm -hmm. and make our own organic fertilizer. This is very... This is a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what this is. No, I think it's a piece of burnt something. Yeah. Cool. Is that no, part of the this, sugar process? This is, this is part of the, uh, of the combustion of the bagasse. Oh, really? After you crush the sugar cane, you have a fiber left over. So when all the juice is removed from the sugar cane, what you have left is bagasse. Is bagasse. And then you burn the bagasse mm -hmm. to, as a fuel to produce the steam for all the process, for all the cooking in the, in the industrial wow. process. So not only do you use it once to fuel the steam, but you use it again to fertilize. That's right. Okay, so we have to, we have to put some of this fertilizer uh -huh. on top of the, of the sugar cane. And then this will grow for 12 to 14 months and it will be ready for harvesting. When you're building for the future, instead of poisoning the soil, you need to enrich it with organic waste. Thinking better instead of thinking bigger. So these sugar canes are fully grown and ready to harvest. Yes. They wow, are. they're huge. How tall do they get? Oh, they get about uh, maybe almost three meters. Just watch my steps so you won't fall down. Wow, look at that knife. It's a big one, This huh? is serious. So what's he doing now? He's cutting the sugar cane. As you can see, he has to uh, cut just in the, uh, on the bottom of the, the sugar cane and then cut the and top. cut the top off? Yeah. Uh, how do you know it's ready to harvest? Well, two ways, because of the size uh -huh. of, the, of, the, of the stem, and we do a, a field test with a refractometer. We, uh, we measure the amount of sugar, the concentration of sugar. I'm gonna show you how they do this work. Okay. You have to cut it just in the bottom, uh -huh. like this. Ah. And then you turn it this way, be careful. Okay, and we cut the top right at this point. Uh -huh. Okay, and there it is. It's ready. And we'll so you leave all the tops on the ground? Yes, the top just stays on the ground. Yeah, why do you do that? Because uh, all this uh, organic matter is gonna uh, work as a fer fertilizer in the future. So could I try one? Sure. Oh, this is you're... a great knife. I need one of these in my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Get a good angle. It's very hard. Do it again. You can cut <laughs> Gotta it. Gotta grab it. Well, so just let it go. Lift, let it go and, and do it again. Yeah, that's there we it. go. That's it. These are huge. <laughs> and then cut it again right here. Right here. Up right a little more. Here. Yeah. Good. There we go. Okay. Very good. <laughs> you have a lot of practice with the knives. <laughs> At your kitchen, eh? Oh yeah, this is just like the one I have. In most of the sugarcane plantations, what they used to do is they first burn the whole field to get rid of the leaves and the, the tops. Mm -hmm. Basically because when you do that, you lower down the cost of harvesting. It would be much easier to cut down a stalk without, without all, all of these the... leaves, yes. Yeah. We're not permitted and, and we don't believe that uh, burning the, uh, the sugar cane is a good practice mm -hmm. because when you burn you damage the soil yeah. and you damage as well the stem. So can I taste it? Sure, sure we can. You're pretty good with that knife. Lots well, of practice, huh? maybe not as good as you are in, in your <laughs> kitchen. You That's can taste one. it. Mmm. It's sweet like sugar but it has a lot, a lot more flavor, almost like a fruit. Mm -hmm. And so how much sugar would be in one stock? Well, that's a good question. Maybe, let's say... Uh, would it be... Five, five, five spoons. 
Five spoons? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, because to make a to make a metric ton, you will need a lot of stems. Yeah. Maybe thousands of them. That or is hundreds unbelievable. Of them. That is a tremendous amount of work. Oh yeah. In a day's work, a good cutter will hack down two tons of cane, more than 2,000 stalks. That produces about 50 of those kitchen-sized five-pound bags of sugar. This sugar cane is coming just from the field. Mm -hmm. The crushing is the next step. This is where we squeeze all the juice from the sugar cane. The process is ancient. Rollers crush the cane, squeeze out the juice. And this is the sugar cane juice down here? What would be waste elsewhere is valuable here. The cane fiber, drained of its juice, is put to use. It's fuel to run the factory. It's burned to make free electricity for nearby homes. And its ash becomes compost, put back into the soil. That's hot. Most of cane juice is water, about 90%. Here, the water is simply boiled away. So you can see all the bubbles and the water is going out, and the, the liquid is getting more and more concentrated. What's left is pure cane juice. No additives, no chemicals, just the good, sweet stuff. Here it comes. Oh, cool. Wow, so what's going on here? The, uh, the syrup is coming out, which is ready for uh, granulation, and uh, they have to to do some paddling, some agitation, so air comes into the uh, into the liquid. Oh, yeah. And then it will begin. It will begin to grow like a souffle. Really? You will see that in a moment. And they have to keep on agitating, agitating. You're so just working air into the. Working air into. I mean, this is basically like a caramel almost, right? This is caramel. Hot caramel. Hot caramel. You see how it's growing? Oh, that's amazing. Why does it do that? Because all the air injected, all the air bubbles that they injected through the agitation makes that to grow like a souffle. Oh and then you will see all of a sudden a lot of steam coming out. And that is very interesting. That's the way it's losing all the water. Wow, look at it go. Look, yeah, it's going up, it's going up. And all of a sudden it's going to break. It's like it's alive. Alive indeed. As the sugar solidifies, it crystallizes. Keep on stirring, stirring, making sure it hardens into those tiny, perfect crystals. It's gonna take a few minutes more to be solid. You wanna try it? It's yeah. hard. Yeah. It's hard, but... Uh... Whoa, it's really thick. So you wanna be scraping the bottom? <laughs> it's very hard. It's pretty hard, yes. These guys are very, very strong. Good shape. It's okay. Ooh, all right. <laughs> now it's sucanat is coming out. Sucanat, sugar cane natural. Take two or three letters from the top of each word. Sugar cane natural. You get sucanat. Made a simple way by merely drying the juice of the cane to keep the vitamins and minerals that nature supplies and keeping to the molasses. That's what gives it the color. Yeah, but you can yeah. try it. Take, take a little bit of it and taste it. It tastes really, really good. And to me, it doesn't taste as just sweet as the regular refined sugar. It has, maybe it's because there's so much more going on. Like the sweetness doesn't hit you. It, it's more palatable. It's fantastic. I'm gonna take it home. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no longer is sugar just sugar. There are so many varieties, each with a unique color, texture, flavor. Going to Costa Rica and seeing this production and seeing what they were making, it really made me think a lot more about sugar and about using it as an ingredient that can enhance a dessert that you're making and really star in it rather than just being a sweetener or in it, something that you add just without thought. Here we have four different kinds of sugar and this is just shows sugars are so different and their applications are different as well. 
I found after the trip to Costa Rica, I've changed a lot of my recipes and I am very sugar specific in a lot of them because I think the different sugars lend themselves to different processes, different flavors. This is just your regular white granulated sugar. It's next to um, a less refined granulated sugar. And you can really see the difference. With the granulated sugar, all of the molasses are removed. It's very fine grained and very white. I found that this is the sugar to use when you're cooking a caramel or something that you really don't need a lot of flavor addition in and of itself. And this organic cane sugar would be one step away from that with less of the molasses removed. And the funny thing that I found is that it actually tastes less sweet than the granulated sugar because there's more going on in it. It's a, there's a little more molasses flavor. It's still not strong flavored, but it's, um, it's less sweet. And I love that about it because I, a lot of my desserts, I try to keep them from being very sweet. Like I like a little sweetness, but no, not cloying. And I just found that this one works really well and I've used it in almost everything. And this is organic brown sugar and it is wonderful. It's, Brown sugar adds more moisture to a recipe than just like a granulated sugar. And organic brown sugar it has a wonderful molasses flavor that's so different. I mean, it's almost like a tobacco-y uh, molasses flavor. And then this last sugar is sucanat, which is it's like the brown sugar dry, so it has a strong molasses flavor and it's formed in these granules. And I found that this is really great for like candying nuts. Um, it melts and covers the nuts, and that's what we're using it for today. What I'm going to make here is uh, one of my favorite recipes. It's a brown sugar cake. And actually, we're using three different kinds of sugar in this dessert, so it's, it's, I think it's a great recipe to make today. We're going to start by making a brown sugar sauce, which is going to go in the cups that we're baking in and also in the middle of the cakes. All right, so I brought butter and heavy cream to a boil. And I'm just gonna whisk it together so that it forms a sauce. We're gonna take our cups and put a little of the brown sugar in the bottom. I use these four ounce foil cups. You can use ramekins. You can even bake this as a big cake. Just a thin layer of the brown sugar. And once you fill all of your cups, I put them in the freezer while you make the cake so that uh, they don't mix into the cake batter when you're filling them. We're going to start the cake with half a pound of butter, and you want it to be room temperature butter, not cold, because it really won't mix into the cake if you start with cold butter. You're going to add half a cup of sugar, and I'm using the organic cane sugar, which since there's so much sugar in this recipe, it's nice that it's not as sweet. And a quarter cup of light brown sugar. And then when it's all combined, we just slowly add in three large eggs. And the butter you're using here is unsalted butter. I use unsalted butter in all of my recipes because I like to adjust the level of salt. And now I'm gonna add the eggs. Just one at a time until they mix in. Then when this all comes together, we're gonna add our dry ingredients which are one cup of flour, um, half a cup of ground macadamia nuts, teaspoon of salt, and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Well, I'll add the vanilla right now. So I usually, for this recipe, fold in the dry ingredients by hand. Because there are three eggs in it, a lot of liquid, it really doesn't come together until you add the dry ingredients. So I'm just gonna add them all in at once. All right, so now we're ready to fill our cups. Use this spoon and divide it between the six cups. And you're gonna fill them probably three quarters of the way to the top. And then you're gonna bake it in a 300 degree oven for uh, seven minutes until it starts baking around the sides and then we're gonna put a little spoon of the brown sugar sauce in the middle. So, I'm gonna put it in the oven. And while this is baking, we're gonna candy some macadamia nuts. 
I wanted to include macadamia nuts in this recipe because it's another product we saw when we were in Costa Rica, and also because I love macadamia nuts. I'm starting by adding just a tiny bit of simple syrup, which is just sugar and water, equal parts, brought to a boil, and it stays in a syrup used for everything in pastry, from sweetening sorbets to candying nuts. And I'm using the sucanat to candy these because of its great molasses flavor and also it's really cool because it melts onto the nuts and gives them like a honey roasted peanuts kind of thing. So once you put enough sucanat on there just so they're once again coated, you're gonna put them on a sheet pan, spread them out and toast them in the oven probably for about 10 minutes, just until like, you can really smell them toasted and until all of the sucanat melts. All right, these are ready to have the brown sugar sauce put in the center. Um, you can tell because they're, they've risen up and they're cooked around the edges and still soft in the middle. So at this point, I'm just gonna take a spoon of the brown sugar sauce and just spoon it right into the center. If you um, put the sauce in too early, it falls right to the bottom of the cake. And if you put it in too late, it sits right at the, the top edge. So it's taken a lot of time for us to get the timing of this part right. All right, now they're ready to go back into the oven, probably about another 14 minutes. Macadamia nuts are done. They're nice and toasty and dry. The simple syrup is dry and the sugar is stuck to them. They're beautiful. So we'll let those cool and check the cakes. Oh, they're beautiful. So I just test it by feeling the middle of the cakes. They're done, they bounce back, they're nice and golden. They're beautiful. They smell so good. I like to serve this with uh, roasted pineapple and vanilla ice cream. So it kept pineapple rings, cooked them in, uh, made a caramel with vanilla bean and cardamom pods and roasted them in the oven for about 20 minutes. And then you get this beautiful golden pineapple. Look at that, nice. We put the cake right next to it. some of our candied macadamia nuts. This is our uh, craft vanilla ice cream. And then uh, I like to finish it with a little hand juice from roasting the pineapple. And that's it. A brown sugar cake with roasted pineapple, candied macadamia nuts, and vanilla ice cream. Using products like this, it's so special to be in a restaurant like this that gets these great products and especially from the smaller farmers or the smaller producers like we visited in Costa Rica. It just creates the sense of community and it makes you feel like you're a part of something great and bigger than just desserts that you're making.